All right, guys, today's video is going to explain how I actually make a living. I've had a few comments and questions about how I can earn enough to build this garage or work on some of these goofy projects, and that's what I'll talk about. So since 2011, I've been selling vehicles at Barrett-Jackson. I've sold 14 vehicles there. For those of you unfamiliar with Barrett-Jackson, it's one of the biggest auction companies in the country for collector cars. And uh, I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and there's a Scottsdale Barrett-Jackson and a Vegas Barrett-Jackson that I go to pretty regularly. There's also a Florida one at West Palm Beach, and then there's one at the Mohegan Sun in Connecticut. I've never sold at the Connecticut one, but I've sold at the other three. I've sold a total of 14 vehicles since 2011, and so I was trying to decide which one I should talk about, and I wanted to pick one that wasn't one of the full resto mods that I've done, because those can take six to nine months, and there's so much involved, and if I talked about it, I would just drone on and on and, and show you all the pictures, because I don't have videos of the builds. The one that I'm going to talk about today is the 13th vehicle that I've sold. So it's pretty recently, and what's nice about it was it was one of the lowest cost vehicles that I've done, and then the profit margin ended up being pretty good. So it was, it was definitely on the better side, but it's kind of like the most average of the 14 that I've sold to kind of give you guys an idea. In September of 2017, I had just sold a 1954 F100 at the Vegas auction, and it did very well. And so I took the money from that auction, and I was trying to find a vehicle that I could get quickly enough. And that one, I believe it was in either September or October of 2017. So I only had a little, I had a very short window to find a vehicle because I always try to have the application in by Thanksgiving in order to get into the January auction. So I started looking for a vehicle actually while I was still in Las Vegas after I had just sold the 54 F100. And on Craigslist, I found a really, really weird, funky, unique vehicle uh, for sale in Phoenix. When I got back to Phoenix, I took a look at it. Luckily, it hadn't sold yet. It was on Craigslist for probably two or three weeks. Um, so it wasn't something that was selling super fast, but it was a 1961 Ford F100 unibody long bed. And I don't normally go near long beds, but it was just interesting enough. Now, the previous owner was an aircraft mechanic who built it in the 80s to tow his race trucks. So this would have been before everybody who towed was using diesel. And what he did was he took a 312 Y block from a supercharged 57 T-Bird and then he built it up even further and removed the supercharger, installed a turbocharger, uh, then it put a carburetor on it with methanol injection. And then he added a divorced transmission. So it had two separate manual transmissions. So it had the manual four speed top loader and then it had a gear reduction unit behind it. And it was, it was just so weird. It was all patinaed. It looked mostly original with the paint. I found out later that the passenger side fender had been replaced, which is why the passenger side paint looked better. It had been touched up and the driver's side was a little bit beat up. And so I, I bought it uh, after, after a test drive. The thing was fast as all get up. It was crazy. Uh, but it was very quiet because it had a Series 40 Flowmaster and of course the turbocharger to quiet everything down. So it was a little on the quiet side and it had drum brakes in the front, which I did not like. The interior was a little bit beat up. So I got it for $6,100. And I got it into the shop and started making a list of things that I wanted to change. And the first thing I wanted to change were the wheels. I did not like the wheels that were on it. So luckily I had a 59 F100 that had pretty nice stock wheels on it and they were already kind of patinaed out. So I thought I'd use those. So I swapped those, those wheels out. And then it was sitting way too high still. And it was because it was used as a tow rig. So the guy added a bunch of stiff ad leafs, but that's not the look I was going for. So I ended up removing all of the ad leafs to drop it back down. Not quite slammed, but like a nice cruising height. I did not like drum brakes on the front, especially with how much power this thing made. So I did swap it out for a set of disc brake conversions. And then for the interior, I decided that I was going to reupholstered the seat and then do a nice headliner. So I picked this really nice uh, baby blue and white plaid headliner and then I had my reupholsterer do uh, custom seats. And it was the original bench but he was able to reupholster it and man it looked sharp. I love the interior of this thing. 
And then because it had two transmissions, it was a little bit goofy to understand the uh, shift pattern. So I had my wife uh, use her. She's got a vinyl cutting machine, a silhouette machine, I think it's called. But she was able to die cut out the vinyl to give me the little shift pattern so that I could put that on the dash so that people would know which shifter went where. And then uh, after I did that, uh, put new tires on it, of course. And then uh, we sanded down, we, me and my son, my son and I, we sanded down the body a little bit because when these things were made, the, the front fenders did not get a primer or they got like a, a like an etching primer and then the factory paint. But the doors, they were painted white and then blue. So basically the fenders were blue from the factory. The body was all painted white, and then they went over the two-tone with the blue. So the door was in fantastic shape, but directly behind the door where the fuel tank was, it had worn the paint down, and then the front fender had worn the paint down, so the look was just all off. So I ended up sanding the door down to end up matching the rest of the patina, and then once I got the driver's side good, I looked at the passenger side, and the passenger side looked touched up and beautiful, but the driver's side looked like a nice, worn patina. So I had to sand down the passenger side then to kind of get the look to all blend together. And I think it came out pretty good. So once I had the look dialed in, I had the new seats installed, um, then it was ready to take the pictures and put in the application. So I took the photos and then it was accepted to Barrett Jackson and they, they accept most vehicles uh, until it gets very close to the deadline. So they accepted it and uh, they gave me my lot number. I think it was uh, lot number 617. So that ended up being, I think it was the third day. It was, I think it was Thursday morning and it was the 17th vehicle. And they averaged about 30 an hour. So it was, it was like a half hour into the auction. And it's a pretty good lot number. I think it was valued at 18,000. Uh, which was a, a little higher than I thought it was going to bring, but hey, that's good for me. And it was it was placed with other vehicles that were in the maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollar range. So I thought that was pretty good. Now, as far as finances, I had sixty one hundred dollars into the vehicle. It was about four hundred dollars for the brakes and the shocks. The seat and the headliner was about six hundred bucks. And then I had about $500 into miscellaneous just bits. So then I had to pay $700 to get it into Barrett Jackson. That's the standard rate for that time slot. So I ended up being about $8,300 all in. So at the auction, I brought my buddy Martin with me. Uh, he's quite a salesman and he's a classic car nut. I am not a salesman. I like building these vehicles, but I am not able to convince anybody to buy them. I can tell you the technical stuff on them, but I just don't have that gene so he was he was uh he was helping me sell it he was answering all the questions and being a people person and then if anything got too technical for you know gear ratios or turbo size then the, he sent them my way now the morning of it was not a great showing the weather was not fantastic and because it was thursday and it was so early uh, everybody i think was still hung over from wednesday and there was just not a lot of people there so i had pretty low expectations now they take, Barrett Jackson takes 8% from the seller. So with the 8% and all the fees, I knew that I needed to make uh, $8,964 to break even. So basically, the truck had to sell for nine grand to break even. And I had a little less than 60 hours into it total. So it wasn't a big build by any means. I mean, we're talking a little over a week's worth of work. I had expectations that it would sell for 10 to 12. That's what I thought it would do. And that would have brought me a few thousand dollars, which would have been fine because it wasn't too much work and it was pretty fun to do. Uh, but when I saw how few people were there, I was just praying that it would break even. So the there were a couple of guys uh, that were, there were actually two different farmers who were really interested in it. And they were chit-chatting with, with Martin and I. And, uh, and then right before it goes across the block, they, they'd go take their seats. So then uh, Martin and I answered all the questions there were for the people. So we went and sat down and just kind of hoped for the best. And the, the auction started and it was it was moving pretty good you know one two three four five okay we're getting there uh once it hit nine and ten i said okay anything here is profit we're just totally gravy uh, it slowed down at about 13 and then it was going by 500 so it's 13 5 14 14 5 15. it ended up selling for 16 5 
which is not bad. It's more than I thought it was. Uh, I think it was a good deal for everybody because it was a nice truck. If it would have been a short bed, I, it would have sold for over 20. But being a long bed and being a unibody, so you couldn't convert it to a short bed, definitely hurt. And it was very funky. You know, it takes a special kind of person to want a carbureted, turbocharged, dual transmission, long bed, old school pickup truck. And so they bought it for 16.5. Uh, after the fees, the 8% that they take, uh, they ended up cutting me a check for 15180 which is not bad. And then you take away the $8,300 that I had into it. It ended up being a profit of around $6,880, give or take. And that was on uh, 60 hours of labor, give or take. So it ended up being $114 an hour, rough estimate. That doesn't necessarily include, you know, shop expendables and stuff like that that I go through. But $114 an hour, I certainly cannot complain about that. Uh, it could have turned south, obviously. Uh, it could have sold for eight. I could have lost money on it, but it did pretty good. So that's the story of what it's like to sell a Barrett Jackson. That was the most, not average, but that was that was the best representation I think I could give and it, it was a nice low dollar vehicle that I picked up really quick that I did almost nothing to so that's a good example of when everything goes as according to plan and, and it sells for a little bit better than expected I've certainly had some that didn't do so well so here I what I do what I'd like to do is I'd like to show you the 14 vehicles that I have sold very briefly here and then if anyone's interested in hearing the story behind any of these 14 uh, some of them have really weird stories. Uh, some of them are really straightforward. So the first two vehicles I sold at Barrett Jackson were from Japan. I imported them from a Japanese auction site where I'd only seen them online. And that was a diesel powered right hand drive FJ40 Land Cruiser. That was awesome. And then a Japanese fire truck, a 1984 Nissan Safari. And that was a total goof. I just playing around wanted to see what that would do. The next one I sold was actually the first vehicle that I built completely from scratch. Every nut and bolt on this on this vehicle I did myself. Uh, the only thing I didn't do was the paint and that was an FJ40 Land Cruiser. After that I sold a uh, 63 Fairlane and then a modern uh, 2004 T-Bird. I sold a green FJ40. Now I did not do this one, I bought this one about 90% completed. I would not have painted it this color, but it was, uh, it was a good deal and it was awfully goofy. The next one I did was a Factory 5 Cobra that came out absolutely gorgeous. Uh, after that was uh, one of the toughest builds that I've ever done. It was a, a 1955 AC Asica, an all aluminum British sports car that they only made 300 of. And it was, it was a lot of work, but that was a fun build. Uh, after that, I actually built and sold the smallest car in the world that I did for a kind of a goof. Uh, it was it was just to see if I could get in the Guinness Book, and I did, and then I sold it there. After that was the one that had the most fabrication. It was uh, Black Lightning. It was a 1955 F100 that I had done a complete chassis swap to a modern F-150 Lightning drivetrain. So it was the supercharged 5.4 Lightning, and that thing was an absolute rocket ship. Uh, the year after that, I did uh, the same kind of style, a 1956 F-100 100 that I went with a different color on. After that was a 1954 F-100, and then after that was the 1961 Unibody that I told you about. And then the most recent vehicle that I've done was a 1959 F100 that I did a Crown Vic swap on. So it was a, a complete build by me, but it was a little bit on the low budget side. And those are the 14 vehicles that I've sold over there. Uh, if you're interested in hearing the story about any of them in particular, just in the comments below, let me know which one strikes your fancy and I'll tell you, tell you the story behind it. But I hope that answers some questions on how I make a living. Uh, I hope it answers questions if anyone's interested in selling vehicles at Barrett Jackson. It's a, it's a tough gig, but there is money to be made. And as far as I can tell, after 14 vehicles, there are no shortcuts. So I'm happy to tell anybody what little tips and tricks that I know, but it is gonna be a lot of work and uh, you're going to get ulcers. <laughs> But the, there it is. So hope you enjoyed this. Hope it was informative. Let me know.